our viewers, we are here today with um, Donna Duran of Broadneck Grill, which actually has two locations, one in Cape St. Clair and one in Edgewater. My name is Heike Hamon uh, with Idea Bridges Business Coaching, and we're doing this interview on behalf of the Informed Entrepreneur. Thanks for having us here at this Thanks. beautiful location. Well, thank you. Thanks for interviewing me. Oh, absolutely welcome. Um, we're trying to learn more about successful business owners in Anne Arundel County. And um, one of the things we talked about before the interview is that you have two locations. Um, the first one you purchased, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to purchase an existing business versus maybe building it from scratch? What are some of the pitfalls you have encountered? Well, when we purchased um, the Cape St. Clair location, it was an older building uh, and uh, it was not uh, making money at the time. So, one of the pitfalls is you have to have some working capital to keep it going. Mm -hmm. And also some money aside for repairs. So, refrigeration repairs, uh, air conditioning repairs, and other repairs that the health department may require for uh, your for your kitchen. Uh, hood systems and uh, things of that nature. So, uh, when you first go to buy a restaurant, you really, what you're looking for is, um, what what is the value? And, and what what do you think getting a loan for that amount of money can you actually make money after paying that and your other things so that's one thing to consider and um, it was a rough first two years did some of the things that you learned in that first year surprise you yes but I, we never thought it would take more than two years to come, come in the block and it did and it was quite a struggle but we uh, we, you really have to be patient and put in the effort and the time, and, and it's worth it. Uh, and uh, I, there were times I didn't think it was ever going to happen, mm -hmm. but it did. So, so it actually requires a lot of stamina to buy an existing business that isn't making money. Um, you mentioned that some of your staff has been with you through this time, and you're now well past. 20 years of being a restaurant owner. Can you talk a little bit about what it takes to be a great owner to your team, a great manager, and, and what um, make people stay? Because restaurant has a lot of turnover. That is correct. You usually have a lot of turnover, but yes, I've been very fortunate. I've had uh, my chef with me since day one, which has been over 22 years now, and um, some managers uh, almost as long my chef here at the Edgewater location for 17. So I think the secret is to be respectful of everyone that works for you. Um, give them a nice environment to work in. And uh, another key thing for me was uh, I went and took uh, Spanish classes. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as we got the restaurant, uh, I went back to school and took uh, conversation Spanish. And uh, now I can communicate with some of my employees that um, speak Spanish. That's fantastic. And what some of our uh, viewers may not know is that uh, the Broadneck Grill has a um, Spanish-influenced menu, and the team is also Hispanic yes. to a good extent. Um, another thing you mentioned earlier was um, the impact that uh, growing up um, with a mom who owns a business had on your kids. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Well, they all started working at the restaurant at um, 16 years old, probably 15 maybe, uh, busing tables, uh, then waiting tables, and then uh, bartending. So what I think it, it helped them uh, become very social, polite, courteous, uh, learn how to work hard, mm -hmm. and um, they enjoyed it. They look back on those years, they got to know all our customers. To this day, at the Cape St. Clair location, I am frequently asked how my children are doing because they have waited on them for years. Well, when they would come back from college uh, for summers and um, Christmas break, they would, um, I would pull them in and they would work. Right. So I think it was a, uh, a positive influence on their lives. And also, they're foodies now. <laughs> okay, they like good food. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, having grown up in the restaurant business myself, I know that service is a huge part and uh, being able to interact with people.
people of all sorts of ages and backgrounds. So that's certainly helpful in any career they take going forward. So, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, now, one of the other things we talked about is the transition from having one restaurant to two. And some things you may have done bis differently at this location versus when you started at the first one. Well, actually, I duplicated the, the model, the same same menu, this, um, and the same recipes, exactly everything the same. And the only reason I did that was because it was working. Mm -hmm. And if it was working there, why would it not work here? So um, I would say the only other thing different that I have done, uh, I it's, I went in and remodeled from the get-go. Instead of trying to close and do some remodeling that I've done at the Cape St. Clair location, mm -hmm. it's easier to do it all before you open. Right. So that was one, one uh, difference that I made. Oh, that's important, yes, to try and do. Uh, remodel while someone is in a space is hard, no matter if it's at home or in your business. Um, you also mentioned that um, you have a substantial catering business. Can you tell us a little bit about how that integrates with the restaurant? Uh, well, we've um, been catering for years, 20 years now, um, and we have a different menu than our menu at the restaurant. So we try to um, serve some other foods, um, some more cocktail foods, and cocktail shrimp and crab balls, and um, things that are more appealing for weddings, corporate events. And um, it helps for a business when you're slow. And catering, you're always guaranteed a number of people. So the difference is for the restaurant, let's say on a Friday night, you may get 300 people on the door. Mm -hmm. Or you may get 50 people through the door because there's a concert going on downtown Annapolis. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Whereas catering, if someone books a party for 300, you are going to be paid for 300. Mm -hmm. So it's a little more substantial and it fills in for those days that it's not so busy at the restaurant. It helps, it helps business uh, a lot. Oh, that's great. And do you have a completely separate team for that part of your business? Well, I have Jessica, who is my catering manager. Mm -hmm. And um, we have two catering vehicles. We have a new catering van. Um, and uh, she actually, so that is her team. And we have a few, um, which is nice, teachers that will work for us on the weekends mm -hmm. uh, that cater. And then in addition to that, we just pull from our staff mm -hmm. from the restaurant to help out with catering events. So we have trained bartenders and servers, so everybody that goes on a catering event is from the service industry. Okay. So that, um, I think, helps a lot. That's, that's very important, that, that training component um, that can't be overlooked. Um, tying into that, um, you mentioned earlier that uh, people have been with you for a long time. Have you... Um, created a particular internal atmosphere or company culture or did that come along the way and just grew organically? Is there something you do to, as you said earlier, make your make your staff happy and make them sad? Well, I think you have to listen to them to if they have any um, recommendations or if there, if there are problems, you have to listen and try to help solve the problem. Right. And uh, instead of pushing aside and thinking that, oh, that's just um, you know, how, how it happens in business. Well, no, if you care a little bit and put a little more effort into it, uh, it, it shows that you care about your employees. Right. Now, um, another thing you addressed earlier was that um, you wanted to make some changes and there was some resistance. So. How do you deal with something like that that happens in any kind of company? We need to make it different, create a different policy, a different product. How do you deal with people resisting change? Uh, you try to, again, it's communication. Communication is key. You, you talk to them and you assure them that you think this is a, a way uh, for the restaurant to thrive and it will be better for everybody. And, um, and let's try it jump on board and try it. Uh, since we have made some changes and they've proven to be better changes, um, 
they are now believing that change is good and to stay current. And, and it's in, with anything. Like if you go to the grocery store now, now it's farm to table and, and fresh produce. And people aren't buying the sugary sodas and a lot of other things. So you have to change with the market. Right. Absolutely. Um, another thing that we haven't talked about is the fact that you are dealing with a perishable product. And how does that impact your business plan, your bottom line, when maybe one week this dish is the thing to have and the next week nobody wants it but you've stocked up for it? How do you deal with that? Oh, rotation. So rotation, very important in our business is um, you have to label, date everything and try to make everything as fresh as possible that day. So I did, believe it or not, um, take a few items off our menu a couple years ago, and I had a few customers complain, oh, that was our favorite, why did you take that off? And, and because we want to have everything fresh, freshly made daily, which means you can't have everything on the menu, so we do daily specials. Mm -hmm. uh, so you rotate occasionally, you have to throw things out, but you try to eliminate that, and if you run out of something occasionally, that's just the way it is. Right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today and sharing some of what you've learned with our audience. I hope everyone uh, watching has picked up on a few things, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at our next interview. Thank you. It's such a pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you.